and welcome to another edition of Medicare Simplified with your host, Dave Miller. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Medicare Simplified. I'm your host, Dave Miller, and today our journey is going to take us into 2024, what we can expect in regards to prescription drug plan and some changes that are going on. I was on Channel 27 recently, a show called Good Day PA, and before I get into discussing some things more in depth that I couldn't do on TV, I want you to check out the interview. So let's go ahead and switch over to that TV show, and then we'll be right back. We're back with Dave Miller of Miller Insurance Group. He's talking more about the 2024 Medicare changes and sponsoring this segment for us. Okay, regarding 2024, how will the changes look compared to this year? Okay, with currently, you have a deductible, and then you have your initial coverage period, your coverage gap, and catastrophic coverage which you'll have different payments for your drugs based on each section. In 2024 and beyond, what's going to happen is once you've entered a donut hole, you pay a certain amount of money on your drugs, and then when you're out of the donut hole, you pay nothing the rest of the year for any of your drugs. Okay. So if you hit the donut hole, say, in March, and you're out by April, from May to the end of the year, you pay nothing for the rest of your drugs the whole year. What will happen is the drug companies and your drug plan will pick up 20 percent and the government will pick up the other 80. Something we've heard a lot in recent years was, is the cost of insulin. So I'm wondering how will this affect insulin dependent diabetics? In 2017, they started a program for people on insulin. Now, each company doesn't support every form of insulin. So you have to look at your formulary to pick the right company. But insulin has been $35 for one month, 105 for 90 day supply, and that will continue to happen. And that's going forward as well. Now, when it comes to the drugs, there were an 8% increase in the initial coverage, 8% in the coverage gap. But like I said, once you're out of the coverage gap, otherwise known as a donut hole, you pay zero the rest of the year. And so this is what it's going to look like. Correct. That slide right there, what it's gonna look like next year. Um, Aside from this show, um, of course, we have the podcast, right? Like, what is the best way for people to get information? I try to add stuff to my website in the Knowledge Center constantly. Coming on this show, the podcast really boosted. it. And down the road, I have someone who we're kind of in a negotiation phase, but we're looking at doing a call-in radio show. It'd be like a five-minute, seven-minute segment here and there, something I'm looking at towards May, June of next year. Okay. And then with the podcast, will you be putting a lot of this on the podcast? By all means, I've used some of these segments and either spoke before, after, or during them and are taking off. And a lot of people are getting good information. It's spreading like wildfire. And I'm very excited about that because the book, all proceeds go to 501c3. I don't get a dime. The podcast actually costs me money to do it. But, and I make no dimes on that. I'm just out to make sure people are getting good information, learning how to make good choices, not get railroaded into one plan or another. I just want people to learn and make good choices. It's important that you get the right plan, the right product. And just quickly, you mentioned the book that we have here. How can folks get this book? You can go onto Amazon and get it. It's only $8 and change. You can go to my website and on the landing page, it'll be there. And one other thing I'd like to mention is that on my website, we're at a free services section. If you're having difficulty with your prescription drugs, we have a thing there for how you can get pharmaceutical assistance from the state or any state in the country. So if you have a, a friend out in Texas, mm -hmm. tell them to go to my free service, click the pharmaceutical assistance. There's a drop down that'll come up and you pick your state and it'll tell you what you have and how to get it. All right. Wow. Lots of resources. Thank you so much. Always good to have you here with us. A pleasure. As we go to break, we thank Miller Insurance Group for sponsoring these segments for us. We'll be right back. Well, now you got a chance to see some of the changes that are going to be happening for next year. One of the most important things is the insulin saver program is going away, but all insulin tier three or four will remain at $35, like I said on the TV interview. And remember, not every company covers every brand of insulin. They can only cover a few different ones. So make sure your formulary carries the insulin that you're using. Part D deductibles 
are going up by $45 to a total of $545. 8% increase in initial coverage and coverage gap or donut hole. That means you're going to have to spend $5,030 to get into the donut hole. And remember, that is your copay plus what the company pays equals how much the drug cost. And that's how you determine whether you're in the donut hole or not. Once you get in the donut hole and you spend a total of $8,000, you go into catastrophic coverage and no more payments for your drugs the rest of the year. One good thing for people who are unfortunate and have to take a lot of high dollar drugs that I do like that change. And remember, while you are in the coverage gap or donut hole, 5% discount from Medicare does not count towards getting you out of the donut hole. The only part that counts is the 70% discount from the manufacturer and a 25% that you pay. Now, some changes that are coming up and are going to continue to go on for the next few, several years. This year, 2023, Medicare has started negotiating drug prices with manufacturers. They will be announcing the first 10 drugs for price reduction soon, and they will go to effect 2026. Then in 2025, another 15 Part D drugs, the price negotiation will begin, and those prices will go into effect in 2027. Then in 2026, Part B drugs like chemo, HIV, AIDS, and any type of medication that has to be administered to an IV or in a doctor's office. Those are the real expensive drugs, and you wind up paying 20% until you hit your deductible. Those drugs will be negotiated, and new prices will be coming out in 2028. Then, in 2027 and 2028, 20 drugs each year from Part B and D will be negotiated, and those prices will go into effect in 2029 and 30, respectively. Not a lot of help. I think this is overdue, but you know what? Any kind of help we can get to lower the cost of drugs to where people can afford to take their life-saving medications without having to get a mortgage or take out a loan is good with me. People who have low-income subsidy, these changes won't affect them because they're getting medical assistance from their state and they pay a fixed rate for their drugs. I hope this podcast and interview combined were helpful and I hope you'll share these podcasts and also don't forget to subscribe. And let your friends know about them. Some of this information could be quite helpful to them. I've enjoyed talking with you today, and I look forward to continuing our journey together. We'll see you on the next podcast. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this podcast and don't want to miss future episodes of Medicare Simplified with me, Dave Miller, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my book, Medicare Ready, Set, Go, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. If you're looking for Medicare advice, please reach out to me at dave at mig, the number four, the letter U, dot net, or online at mig, the number four, the letter U, dot net.